Hello. Oh, and welcome back. Um, okay, <laughs> so in the last uh, video, last example, we were just kind of going over how to subset data based on a bunch of different conditions uh, that we specified or that are more kind of natural to the data. Um, and the next thing I'm going to show you is how to quickly summarize our subsets. Okay. Um, and by that, I mean, um, instead of making a bunch of different data sets uh, like this and then running a bunch of different code to summarize them, we're going to do it in one fell swoop. So let's, oh, let's just get into it. Okay, so we are going to be using the tidyverse again, uh, per usual. So we're going to be used to <laughs> used to seeing this line of code here, and we're also going to be using very similar uh, structure syntax um, as we see here. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just kind of show you uh, what what we're gonna <laughs> what our end goal is um, by using some base R functions that don't exactly do the job, but just so you can kind of see what's going on, right? So if I run the summary on our data uh, and we, we get we get what we're used to seeing right we get summary measures for age density uh, and then we kind of see the counts for uh, the number of males and females in our data okay but what this does not do is that it doesn't show us um, the individual measures for females and the individual measures for males right it only tells us um, the summaries as if they are just grouped okay and Right now, this is this is fine, but there might be an instance where the scientist or client or whoever you're working with or for, um, you know, they they might want it split up between you know the grouping measures. It doesn't always have to be male and female. It could be you know species. It could be um, plots of land. It could be area. It could be whatever. Right. Um, sometimes it's more uh, a little bit better to kind of see how these summary measures differ between you know your groups that you have. Okay, so let me introduce you to two new functions. Um, pretty simple, pretty simple functions. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calculating the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so the mean is just the kind of expected value, the traditional average, and the standard deviation is just by how much, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's by uh, on average how much our data kind of deviate, right? And how much they kind of move around the mean. Um, and that's that's pretty much that. So the first function is this mean function. It's pretty it's pretty simple. Um, all, if if you want to calculate the mean of something, you just use this this function here. And if I were to put this on the data itself, it's going to throw kind of a uh, an error here because what it's trying to do is that it's trying to take everything in here and calculate some kind of mean. We don't want that. Right, we do not want that. In fact, let's just see what the mean age is by using this function. So let's recall that if we want to grab something that is from inside our data set like this, we just want one column, we use, oh yeah, the dollar sign, <laughs> right? So if I click on that or I could have typed it in whatever and then run that, booyah, I get, I get a mean age of 59.98, which is also the same thing that we see here. Okay, so that's that's essentially what the summary function is doing. It's running a bunch of different functions and then putting it into a nice list like this for us. Okay, and I could replace this with uh, density here and get the same thing, right? Same thing that we see right here. Okay, now what the summary function here, what it does not show you is the standard deviation of our data, right? So how much it deviates away from these values here, uh, respectively. So you guessed it. <laughs> we're going to be using the standard deviation function. And that looks like, uh, not standard deviation, sorry. It looks like just SD. Uh, and it's as simple as that. And we can either copy and paste. I'm going to do that. And we're going to get the standard deviation for our density, muscle density. And it's 16.21, uh, we'll say. So on average, uh, our data deviate away, the muscle density deviates away by this much uh, from the mean on average, okay? Again, though, this is not partitioning. This is not separating things by the grouping. This is just as is. This is the standard deviation of mean for the whole columns, the whole column. So now, you know, we could go in and run summary on the males and summary on the females. That's, that's a couple of lines of code um, that might be, get kind of, uh, I don't know, whatever. Uh, might get a little messy, might get lost. 
Um, it also doesn't tell us, you know, the standard deviation here. It tells us these, these five things, six things um, that are nice, but, you know, we may not so much care about, you know, the 25th and 75th percentile. Maybe we might just care about the mean. Oh, and maybe the median too, which is just, just this median function, same deal, right? Dollar sign, oops, <laughs> dollar sign to get what we want. Uh, and that's, that's the midway point, right? So we have these three functions here, maybe that we just care about, okay? Uh, and not so much the min and the max and, and whatever else, okay? So how are we gonna go about summarizing by these two groups in one fell swoop, okay? Well, that's a great question there. <laughs> that's a great question. So what we're gonna be doing is using the same kind of, uh, the same kind of syntax here, where we take our data and then we do some function to it based on some criteria, okay? Now, I'm gonna be introducing another thing, uh, which we'll get to in just a second, but uh, let, me, let me call this something. Let me call this something. Let me call it, um, summarized, so sum by group. Okay, and I'm gonna be making, oops, <laughs> I'm gonna be making a new data set. Um, not necessarily a whole data set itself, but I'm just gonna be storing the output in this, in the summarized by group object, okay? No biggie, no biggie. But the first thing we wanna do is, well, we wanna grab the data, okay, that we wanna be working with. We wanna do something with, with the stuff that's in here, okay? And then percent greater than percent. And then uh, I want to summarize. But the first thing I want to do is I need to tell the computer, I need to tell R that I want to group by something. I want to group by uh, sex here. I want to split up males and females. Okay, I want to group by this. You hear me saying group by a lot because that's actually the function that we're going to be using, this group underscore by. And what do we want to group by? <laughs> oh gosh. Well, I just want to group by sex. Okay, easy as that, easy as that. So uh, just a little recap, we grab our data called muscle and then we want to group by the group, <laughs> our, our grouping variable here. And this could be anything. Um, this could be, we could have another column here just for fun um, saying, you know, maybe education level, uh, or like whether or not they have had a heart attack in the past, that might be a little bit more relevant. Or like activity level, uh, folks in kinesiology, we know, well, you know that there's, you know, no activity, little activity, moderate and intense, right? As far as exercise, weekly exercise goes, right? There might be a column like that in there too. And maybe we wanted to summarize by those measures, right? So this, this does not just have to be two things. It could be three things or four things or five things or whatever, okay? And the output will get, uh, we'll kind of reflect that idea, which I'll show you in just a second. Okay. Now we, we're telling the computer we want to group by something. And then what do we want to do? Well, and then I want to, I want to summarize the data, right? That, that's the kind of <laughs> end goal here. I want to summarize the data. You hear me using that same kind of <laughs> draw. Uh, I want to summarize our data. Okay. Now this alone won't do anything. This alone is not gonna help us uh, by too much. Um, what we have to do then is say, okay, what this, well, what this function does now is that it says, okay, I'm gonna be printing out just one thing uh, based on our groups, okay? But we have to specify what things we want uh, to, to print out, okay? And we get to call it whatever we want, okay? So let's take a look at our data. Let's say that I just want to find the mean of both of these things, both the mean age and the mean density based on uh, males and females, okay? Or split up between males and females. So the mean age for males, the mean age for females, uh, and, you know, <laughs> same thing here, okay? So how do I do that? Well, I've already told the computer that I am grouping by sex. So it's going to do two different things. It's going to spit out two different means, okay? Now we're going to be using this function here, except we're going to be doing it once for age and once for density. And I can call it whatever I want. So if I say, you know, mean age, whatever, and that's going to equal mean age. I'm using the same function that we saw up here, except I don't need to specify you know, this dollar sign thing because I've already kind of done that right here. And if I just run this, if I just run this, it, we get a little uh, message here. This might show up for you, it might not. I'm running an older version of R and I think 
that this is <laughs> kind of special uh, for this version. It may not happen for you. Of course, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, and if I just run that, check it out. Oh my gosh, so I've got it saved in this thing. I don't need to save it in this thing, but I'm just uh, doing it just so we can kind of see uh, how this will change when we add more stuff. Uh, and it kind of keeps things organized too. So we see here, we get a column and I can actually click on it up here and, and show you. We get a column of the sex, so females and males, and we get the mean age for females and the mean age for males. So in this data, in these data that we have, males are, uh, gosh, like a little bit older, not by much, but just a little bit older than the females in our data, okay? For as far as age goes, right? So the mean age for men is 60 and the mean age for females is <laughs> almost 60, 59. Okay, very cool. Now, let me just kind of show you that this right-hand side that we put inside the summary function, summarize function, uh, this has to look like that. It has to match, you know, the uh, column name here. But this, I could call it anything. Uh, I could call it uh, average age, run that, and then do it again, and look at that. It's changed the name, and that's all. That's all. Average age. Um, we'll stick with mean, just to be kind of consistent. Let's also do the mean density. I think I have it called DEN. I'm going to leave it like that just for consistency's sake. And we're going to use the same function, the mean function. And then we're just going to put our column name, our column name DEN, capital DEN, in there. Run it, control enter, and then run that again too. And now we get a new thing. Check it out. Now we get the mean density for mean muscle density for females and the mean muscle density for males. And it, it turns out that the mean density for males is a little bit lower than it is for females. And this might be due to the fact that we have a slightly older um, mean age here than females. But again, who knows? <laughs> who knows? That's not our job. That's the, uh, that's the scientist's job. Um, anyway. So this is nice. This, this splits things up pretty, pretty nicely. What if I wanted the standard deviation for age and density between the, the two sexes, right? Well, that's just going to look like standard deviation, oops, age, whatever. Again, I could call this side whatever I want. Um, I'm using the underscore just so I can kind of read it a little bit better. And we'll use this SD function, standard deviation function, to get that. And then I'll put a comma there. Um, the reason why I put it here next to age is, is so it shows up uh, in the next column next to age rather than like two extra things out here. Just, just for readability sake. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. Standard deviation for density. Use the SD function on density. Again, matching the column name. Case sensitive. Run that, run that. Oh my gosh, look at this. Right, so I've got it saved here, but it also prints out. Um, it's, it's the same information, just rounded a little differently. So then we get, you know, a mean and a standard deviation. So females have a mean age of um, 59.7 with an average deviation from that by about 12 years. Um, and then the same thing for uh, males. So overall, the spread is about the same um, for as, as far as age goes. And we see here, that the density, the mean muscle density, deviates a little bit more in, oops, <laughs> a little bit more in males than it does for females, right? And look at this, we got, we got a, pretty, a pretty concise uh, set of information here with just a little bit of code. I know this looks like a lot right now, um, but we can actually do a ton with this. Within the summarize function, we can also do, let me, let me do this. Um, we can do median age, calling the left hand side, whatever I want, and use the median function. Okay, and I can do the same thing over here. Um, making spaces just, just for readability's sake, median age, and then run this. Again, don't forget the commas in here. This just separate, separates all of these things. Um, we'll, we'll talk about, <laughs> we'll talk about uh, errors here in, in just a second, but we run that and then run that. Check it out. So we get the median age 59 and 61 uh, for females and males. Uh, median density 59 and 61. Wait a second. <laughs> that's that's better. 
sorry. Uh, anyway, so it looks like the median density, muscle density is the same for males and females. Um, and that's probably due to the fact that the mean density is, is pretty close between these. Oh man, what else can we do? We can add a ton in this. Um, there are, we can essentially recreate the summary function, but we're splitting it up uh, between males and females. So I could do a uh, minimum age and that function just looks like min age. And let me make sure I get this. Uh, we'll put it right here. Min density, and that's the min, <laughs> the function min, min, and then den uh, for our variable. Check it out. We get the smallest value for right there, right? And so you could put these anywhere. Um, if you want to match the summary function, you could put, you know, min, um, and then and then mean, median, and then max after that, maybe standard deviation after that, whatever. It's totally up to you how you want to organize this kind of thing. Um, but you can get pretty, pretty <laughs> detail oriented uh, with this single function here. Um, you have a little bit more control with what you do and don't report, which I like. Um, the summary function is fine, uh, but you're kind of, you know, <laughs> R is kind of telling you what it wants. Uh, where in this case, we are telling R what we want to include, because we may not really care so much about the quantiles and the median or the um, minimum and the maximum. We may just care about these kind of summary and spread um, measures here. Okay, very cool, very cool. So just as a little tiny recap before we move on uh, to how to handle errors, uh, we took this data that we have using the tidyverse, using this, these pipe operators here, using our data, we then grouped by our grouping variable, which in this case was males and females. And then we summarized, uh, and then we specified what summary functions we wanted, okay? And it's as, it's as easy as that, it's as simple as that. Um, and you know, it, it looks like a lot right now, but I promise, I promise that over time, this will become a little bit more natural to you. Um, and, and you'll realize, you know, how, how useful this kind of stuff can be. Okay. So with that, I will see ya. Oh, I'll see you in the next one.